today I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic payroll and holiday calendar in Microsoft Excel, one that updates automatically year over year. In this updated video, I'll show you a new formula setup for the dates and how to add a spin button at the top so that you can update the year with one click and instantly see your calendar dates update. Let's get started. By the way, if you want to save time and purchase my completed calendar template, it's all set up for you and I'll include a link in the description below. You can jump to the end of the video and I'll show you how to use it. The first thing you want to do is create a sheet within your Excel spreadsheet that has your payroll schedule. And so depending on your organization, whether you pay through the current pay period or if you pay in arrears, depending on what your pay period begin and end dates are, you'll know what your paycheck dates are for the following year. So you'll want to create this with the correct paycheck dates that you want to highlight on the calendar. So I've got that set up here. And then I also have a table on this sheet that houses the company paid holidays. So I've got the 2026 company paid holidays. So once you have your company paid holidays and your paycheck dates laid out, we can start working on our calendar grid. So over here on this tab, we are going to do the biweekly calendar. And this is going to be a Sunday work week start. So if your work week starts on a Sunday, we've got Sunday through Saturday listed here in our monthly grids. So remember, if you want to see how to build this from scratch, be sure and check out my other video. I'll link it below so you can get to it. But here we've got our grid laid out. And now what we want to do is we're going to go up to page layout and we're going to click on margins, click on custom margins, click on the page tab and just make sure that you click this button that says fit to one page wide by one page tall and then click OK. And this way, when you're done with your calendar, you can save it as a PDF and it'll fit on one page. Now I'm going to go back and then the first thing we want to do is add our spin button. So we're going to start with 2026, but we want to have a spin button in case we want our calendar to update automatically for the next year. We can do that very easily. So we're going to select the cell where we have our date input here, and we're going to come up to the developer tab. And if you don't see the developer tab on your ribbon, go ahead and right click, click on customize the ribbon, under the main tabs, just make sure that the developer tab is selected and click OK. Now what we're going to do is come up to insert on the developer tab and under form controls, click here where it's the spin button icon. Now we're going to draw, we're going to click and drag and draw our spin button. And we can use our arrows on the keyboard or our mouse to drag and place this where we want it. Now we're going to right click on the spin button and click on format control. For the current value, type in the current year that you have typed in there. So I'm going to type 2026. And then the cell link, place your cursor there and then click on the date and then click OK. So then if I click outside to deselect, now I can spin this button and it'll go up each year. All right, now let's create our monthly grids. The first thing I want to do is select all of the grids for January. And notice that we have seven columns across for each day of the week and six rows down. That's so that we have enough rows that'll house all of the dates in any given month. I'm going to right click, click on Format Cells, click on Custom, and type D right there, a lowercase d, and that indicates that even though there's going to be a date populated in that cell, what we want to display is the number of that day. So the first of the month will have a 1, the 15th of the month will have a 15, and then we'll click OK. Now let's build the formula that we're going to use to create the calendar months with all the correct dates. Select the first cell in your January grid. So this Sunday, the first Sunday that's in the January grid, we're going to select that and we're going to type a sequence formula. So type equals sequence, open parentheses. For rows, we're going to pick six so that we'll have enough rows for every day of that month. Hit comma and select seven. That's the seven columns for the days of the week. Hit comma. And now we're going to add date value and open parentheses. And we're going to select our value, which is the month of January. So select that cell there 
and we're going to hit ampersand and then we're going to select our calendar year, the cell that has our calendar year. Now we're going to hit F4 or function F4 to have an absolute reference around that date. And then we're going to close the parentheses. Now we're going to say minus weekday, open parentheses. And now we're going to copy this section of our formula, the date value section. So you can come up here, hit control C to copy, come back to the end, hit control V. And then we're going to close parentheses and we're going to say plus one and then close out the formula and hit enter. Now this adds all of the days for our monthly grid automatically. So now what we want to do is we're going to copy this to all the other grids. So I'm just going to select everything, hit control C, and then I'm going to come up to the first cell in each monthly grid and just paste and it will paste everything in appropriately. Now notice if we use our spin button and change the year up here, notice that all of our dates will automatically update for us and we can use this calendar year over year. Now let's add our conditional formatting rules so that all of our pay dates and holidays will automatically highlight over here on our calendar. So to do that, we're just going to select our first cell with our sequence formula and we're going to select all of our monthly date grids and then we're going to scroll up we're going to come to the Home tab, click on Conditional Formatting, New Rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format, and we're going to type equals count if, open parentheses, we're going to navigate to our payroll schedule, we'll select the range of dates that have all of our pay dates, and then we're going to hit comma, and then navigate back to our calendar, and we're going to select the first cell in our monthly grid. So that's B11. Now we're going to hit function F4 or F4 three times to remove that reference along that cell. And then we're going to close the parentheses. Now we want to format this green. We have a key up here on our calendar where we have pay dates that are in green. So we want to click on format, click on fill and select your green color and click OK. We'll click OK. And we'll notice that all of our pay dates are going to be highlighted in green automatically. Now for all the holidays, we'll do the same formula, but we're going to reference those holiday dates. So we're going to, while everything's still selected, come back up to conditional formatting, click on a new rule, use the formula, and we're going to type equals count if, open parentheses, we'll navigate to our payroll schedule tab, and this time we'll select all of our holiday dates, type comma, and then go back to our calendar grid, select the first day of the first grid, which is B11, and we're going to type F4 or function F4 to remove those dollar signs, which are the reference or anchors, close parentheses. Now we're going to format this in the orange color for holidays. Click on Format, go to the Fill tab, and click on your orange color, and click OK. Click OK, and all of your holiday dates will update automatically. Now notice that our monthly grids are displaying dates that are not in that current month. So for example, in our January grid, we've got a few days from the prior December, and then a whole week or row of dates that actually belong to February over here. So let's say we want to hide those. Let's go ahead and select all of the dates in that monthly grid, come up to conditional formatting, click on new rule, use a formula, and we're going to use a formula that's going to look at the month of the date. And if it doesn't match the month of that calendar grid, it'll format it, we'll format it to be white and be hidden. So what we're going to type in here is equals month, open parentheses, and we're going to select the date in the first cell. We're going to remove the reference on that. So hit F4 three times to remove those dollar signs, close parentheses. Then we're going to use our left and right caret. That means is not equal to. And then we're going to say month open parentheses and select the cell that has the name of the month for that monthly grid. 
Now that's text, so we want it to be recognized as a date or a month. So we're going to say ampersand 1, and then we're going to close parentheses. And so this is saying that if this date, or really any date in this selected area, does not match January, then we want to hide it. So to hide it, we're going to click on Format. We're going to click on Font, go under Color, click White. And on the Fill tab, click on White and click OK. Then we'll click OK again. And notice now that our extra dates, uh, while well, they're still there, if you click on them, you'll see the formula but they are hidden from view. So if you go to print to PDF, um, those dates will be hidden. So the only tedious thing about that particular conditional formatting is that we have to do it for each month. So I do have to come over here to February and do the same thing. We're gonna to go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, equals month, open parentheses, select the first date in that monthly grid, Remove the relative reference, so you can hit F4 or function F4 three times. Close parentheses. Is not equal to month, open parentheses, select the month at ampersand one and close, and then go to format, fill color white, font color white. Click OK and OK. So even though it's a bit tedious to set that up for each monthly grid, once you have it set up, when you change your year, everything will automatically display correctly for you on your calendar grids. Now let's say that you have a Monday work week start. So you would want to build out your calendar grids to start with a Monday through Sunday. And so in that case, there's a slight tweak to the formula that we're going to use. And so it's the same formula, right? We're going to do equals sequence and we're going to type six rows, comma, seven columns, comma, and then we're going to say date value, open parentheses, and we're going to link the month and say ampersand and select the year. We're going to make the year a relative reference, so hit function F4, close parentheses, minus weekday, open parentheses, and then we're going to copy our date value and just paste. Now instead of closing our parentheses and putting plus one, we're going to hit comma and we're going to type number two because we want the second option for the Monday work week start. So we're going to type two and then we're going to close our parentheses. Then we'll say plus one and close parentheses and hit enter. So by doing that, we're able to create our monthly grid that starts with a Monday week start instead of a Sunday. So then when you copy these onto your other monthly grids, they will automatically update with the correct work week start as a Monday. Now, if you've already purchased my template, then you'll notice that you have an instructions tab that has some helpful information on how to use the templates. You have your payroll schedule or current year payroll schedule that you'll update this each year with your new dates for each subsequent year. So whether you have a bi-weekly payroll with a Sunday week start or a bi-weekly payroll with a Monday work week start, or you might have a semi-monthly payroll schedule. You'll just want to update your dates and your dates for your holidays in these tables here on this tab. But if you just have a bi-weekly payroll schedule with a Sunday start, then you can use just this tab for this particular calendar. So we have a bi-weekly calendar with a Sunday week start all set up for you. Then we have a bi-weekly calendar with a Monday week start. Or if you have a semi-monthly payroll schedule, we have both the Sunday week start and the Monday week start. And all of the conditional formatting is already set up for you on these templates, so you can get a jump start. Now you have a dynamic calendar template in Excel that you can use year over year, whether you use this for a payroll and holiday calendar for work, or if you just want to use an Excel calendar for your personal use. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to like it, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, and visit my website at SharonSmithHR.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.